Super active reptiles are a lot of fun to watch and they're a lot of fun to handle, but maybe you're looking for something a little bit slow, mellow, something you can just put on your shoulder, work all day, or curl up and watch a movie with. And today, we're going over the top five chill reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Part of the reason it took me forever to get into things like this, dart frogs and day geckos, is I always had this fascination with just handling reptiles. Like everything I had needed to be handleable. And to a certain degree, I still feel that way, kind of. I love having animals that I can just work with. I can put diamond on my shoulder, work all day, no issues. There's other animals that are great for handling also. Things like our boreal snakes, they're always gonna be trying to get to the top of your head or the top of a perch or the microphone stand. Or Schneider skinks that are gonna be goofy and fun and super handleable and not worrying about being bitten or scratched at all. But what if you want something that, like I said before, just kinda of sits there? You can just kinda of curl up and watch a movie and you don't have to worry about it slithering away. That is what we're talking about today. Let's just, okay, this is a really long intro you get the idea of chill reptiles, right? So let's just start it off with number five, African fat tail geckos. Now these guys are freaking amazing. They are beautiful geckos. I love them. They are maybe not as common as a leopard gecko, but they are so darn similar and they look very similar too. So the care, I mean, the only difference really is the humidity level is gonna be about 20% higher for an African fat tail in comparison to a leopard gecko. Their feet are a little bit different structure, but either way, if I showed your mother who's never seen one of these uh, leopard gecko, they'd be like, oh, it's a different color leopard gecko. But this video isn't about that. There's a video right here about all that, but right now let's talk about why they're chill. And in fact, they actually are very high up on the list in comparison to where they might be if they weren't so small and fragile. This is a full grown animal. They're about the same size as a leopard gecko. So they are, well, fragile, I guess, is the only really good word to use. I wouldn't hand this animal off to a child like I would with basically the rest of the list. And that's why it loses points for chill. Because when I think of chill, bruh, chill, I think of not worrying about it. So if, for example, I were to move abruptly, I'm just trying to shift my weight, I don't have to worry about some of the other animals in the list being hurt if I accidentally were to, you know, squish it between my ear and my shoulder or whatever. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm just saying that they're so fragile, you have to kind of keep an eye on them and be conscious that they're there. Kind of like the difference between, I don't know, babysitting a baby and babysitting a eight-year-old. The eight-year-old, go do whatever you want to do. Don't burn the house down. I'm not going to break this thing. A baby, it's like, I don't want to break your baby. This, this is not a good start to a video. Like, what am I even talking about? But to my point about them being chill, Diglett here has just been sitting like this for a while. So I don't have to worry about her being super jumpy or anything like that. They do have a different temperament in comparison to a leopard gecko. Just simply what I mean is when I tried to pick her up out of her bin, which is kind of wet because she spilled her water, uh, she was kind of hissing and huffing and puffing at me. Now that I got her out, no problem at all. And normally, African fat tail geckos are just peaches. You don't have to worry about them getting huffy puffy blowing your house down, none of that, that stuff. They're very similar in that way to a leopard gecko. And really a leopard gecko could fit on this list in the exact same spot. It's just, we already did videos about leopard geckos this month and I wanted a spot like Diglett cause she doesn't get enough love. She's beautiful. I love this animal. This one might surprise you coming in at number four, black and white tagus. Argentine black and white tegus are amazing animals. I love them. You know that it was a dream reptile. I finally have one. And now she's brumating, which if you don't know what that means, it's kind of like hibernation. I haven't seen her in weeks, except for when I lift up her food bowl to make sure that she's still under there and she looks at me like, go away, you know? So anyway, there's a caveat here. I think that older, mature, uh, adults are kind of what we're talking about here because babies are a little bit squirmy. Mushu, this is what I have here, a beautiful animal. She's great, but she is a squirmy wormy. But then there's other examples where Professor Herp has Frap, who's an amazing animal, just kind of sits there, or Annalise at El Canadian Reptile Girl, and hers 
Jub Jub, she kind of swaddles. And I think that's a pretty cool thing about these animals is that they're very chill. They don't care. You can wrap them up in a blanket and they almost like it. So you're just kind of laying there on your lap, watching TV, working, editing, whatever it is that you're doing, school. Can you imagine just like you show up to school one day and you're like, sorry, this is my little scale baby. And it's a giant four foot lizard. Cause that's what they are, by the way, giants. These guys are massive, especially if you get a big adult male, they can get really big. Now you might get a female that gets only to three feet, but a three foot lizard is a big lizard. That's a big lizard, no matter how you slice it. A couple things to be careful of, they have very strong claws and they have very strong jaws. So make sure that it's a handleable animal, something that is well socialized. I'm not talking about going and you're in Florida and you're like, haha, an evasive tegu. I know what it wants to do. It wants to cuddle with me. It doesn't. It wants to rip your face off. I'm talking about captive bred and mature and well socialized animals, which is very easy to do with black and white tegus, which is why they're on the list. Because if you work a little bit, they become chill and super fun to handle and just kind of not squirmy wormies. Number three. Oh, you guys have to see this coming, right? Doomrolls boas. I love Dumerals boas. They are big, they are thick, they are hug machines. Of all the snakes on the planet, per pound, these are the strongest snake. They are ridiculously strong, but they don't get big enough that they're really dangerous to you, unless you get this super outlier. But normally you're gonna see them six or seven feet full grown. Both of mine are in that range, my adults. So you don't have to worry about your safety all that much. Are big snakes actually even dangerous? Should we do a video about it? Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section and we'll, we'll do it if you want. The thing I like about ground boas is they're not gonna be trying to get up, right? Like a BCI or a BC, we talked about them last week, boas, common boas, they are semi-arboreal. So they're gonna try to get up on your head. They're gonna be, you know, if you're on a couch, try to get to the top of the couch or chair or on a shelf above you. Where Dumo's boas, they don't wanna do that because they're not, they're ground boas. Another thing too is, they're hug machines, did I say that? Like they will give you a big hug and it feels almost like a weighted blanket effect, right? I sleep with a weighted blanket, I like it. it makes me feel all comfy. If I've got a Dormal's bow on me, they get pretty thick. One of mine is 15 pounds. So if they're just kind of sitting on you or laying on you as you're working, watching a movie, whatever, it feels like a comforting effect where you don't have to worry too much because they're slow and deliberate. So you don't have to worry about them just darting unless you like step on their tail or something by accident, which I don't recommend doing. Don't step on your boa tail. And because this list is all great pet reptiles and not just great reptiles, it's important to note these are great pets. The humidity level and temperature level is really easy. They don't need a lot of height. They just need a lot of floor space, which is great. So if you're someone who likes to stack enclosures like me, it works out really well. And overall, they're just an easy and very overlooked pet reptile. Probably one of the best pets for a beginner going on intermediate. And just the way I say it like that is if you are ready for a snake of this size. Amazing temperament, amazing pattern. So overall, you're gonna feel good when you're holding it. It's gonna be fun for you to look at when you're holding. I love Dermal's boas. Okay, number two and one that I think no one's gonna argue ball pythons. Now, this is Pikachu. He is an albino ball python, and this is a full-grown male. This is how big they get. And he is one of my favorite snakes because he's just chill. This is like one of the kings of chill. If there's a Mount Rushmore of chill, this would be on the Mount Rushmore of chill. He will just kind of like hang out like this. Always, I can throw him around my neck. He might move a little bit, but generally what I like to do is put him in my lap, which is like out of frame. So it's like a bad example here, but I'll throw him in my lap and I'll sit there and I'll edit a whole video and he'll just kind of hang out or I can throw him around my neck. I can throw him on my shoulder, like a seatbelt, whatever. Either way, it's fun to handle him. And he's kind of big enough that it doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like I'm gonna hurt him, so he's not fragile, which is another key thing, which is gonna be a talking point through the video, or was, I guess, we're at number two now. In my opinion, this is a perfect size cuddle snake. They're just, they're not big enough that they're dangerous to you, and they're also not gonna be fragile either. This is like the perfect example of a snake that if you are an adult, if you're a child, it doesn't matter, as long as you're careful, like a reasonable amount of careful, you don't have to worry about this snake getting hurt, or really hurting you. And that's the thing about chill, right? Is you wanna relax. And with a ball python, you can feel very relaxed while you're handling it. And I mean, like, he's barely moving. He's a little bit tongue flicks, but that's it. You are very handsome. You look good today. You're having a good day. 
And they come in a bunch of different morphs too. So if part of your, I wanna hang out with my reptile and not move too much, is just watching them be beautiful for what they look like, well, get a ball python. Do you want a yellow one? Do you want a black one? Do you want a white one? Do you want even just the normal look is beautiful in my opinion. They're absolutely gorgeous. I am so happy that I have the opportunity to have several ball pythons. I produced a bunch and the hardest part is selling them because they're just fun to hang out with when you're cleaning them. It takes forever for me to clean the ball pythons because I'll throw one around my neck, clean the bin, and then I want to move it because it's just like so beautiful resting there. If you want something that's beautiful, easy to take care of, cheap to take care of, doesn't take up much room in your house, and will just sit there like a rock for hours on end, you cannot beat a ball python. This is the perfect snake if you're looking for a chill animal. Okay, we'll get them back out. Number one, you had to see this coming, obviously. Bearded dragons. Now this is the perfect example. You've been watching this video, right? And except for when I do the swaps a few times, he's just sitting here doing nothing, not moving, not blinking. Well, he's blinking, but the overall, the only thing I'm worried about is him trying to bite my ear because he does that for some reason. Bearded dragons don't normally do this. It's a diamond thing. Generally, if you knit, if you do arts and crafts, if you play board games, whatever it is that you do, you gain, you sit at it in a chair and you gain, play Call of Duty or animal, Roadblock crossing, I don't game, I don't know what these, what are these games called? Whatever, you're gonna have no issues. It's just gonna sit here and not worry about very much at all. Now, of course, there is a caveat here. Every single one of these animals are individuals. So just because I say a ball python is great and won't move and is gonna be fine, it doesn't mean that yours is, or they're not gonna have days. Everyone has a mood, and it's the same with animals. There have been times where I've had diamond on my shoulder, when we filmed in the other direction here, and they're big. <laughs> and he's trying to jump away. It just, it's very rare, but as a general rule, bearded dragons are very slow moving. They're, see, like now he tries to make a liar out of me, but still he moved like four inches and then that's it. I think the reason that these are ahead of things like leopard geckos is just, they're not fragile in comparison. Like I can kind of, if I did that with a leopard gecko, the tail would detach. You know what I mean? If it's same with a crested gecko, they're just, they're big enough that they're not scary, but they're not fragile either. In my opinion, bearded dragons are kind of the perfect lizard size, or in my opinion anyway. The care isn't too difficult. They're super fun to interact with, super fun to watch, eat. And if you want something that's super chill, these are the king of chill and ear biting if it's diamond and, and salad pooping in also if it's diamond. He's like, he's a weird. Okay, enough is enough. Thank you so much for watching this video. You made it all the way to the end. Please consider hitting subscribe, the like button, leave a comment, whatever. All those things do so much for this channel and take nothing but time out of your day. Four or fives, and I'll write back to you in the comment section. Let's have a little discussion, a little dialogue. I feel like Diane from, should I do a question of the day too? Okay, that's enough, that's enough. And a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. Thank you so much for all the support. You guys get discounts on the merch. I'm not wearing merch today, weird. You guys get extra videos, videos early. You know about reptiles in my collection. Don't do it, don't do it. Almost made it through a whole video. Anyway, for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of the Patreon team and you'll get a sneak peek at uh, the really cool adventure that I'm going on with two other YouTubers. I have to fly there and it's warm. If you join Patreon, you can know all about it today. Okay, that's enough. Because we do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday. Or Thursday, whenever it is.